her. Phil Jackson is here, the coach of the Chicago Bulls. Um, all, uh, well, I say all of Michael Jordan's teammates, many of his teammates we saw earlier. Michael now uh, setting up there at the uh, makeshift press conference podium that has been set up here in this big arena to accommodate all of the folks that want to hear from Michael Jordan. Sitting down now and preparing to tell the world why he is retiring after just nine seasons. Let's leave that to Michael. Uh, we can sneak a peek in there. We'll see. Folks are still uh, obviously getting into position. His uh, attorney there with him, Phil Jackson, also there. Uh, I also see it appears uh, Jer Jerry Reinsdorf, the owner of the Chicago Bulls, the man who owns the Chicago White Sox, who had that parade a little bit rained on last night. I see Scotty Pippen also, John Paxson. Scotty Pippen, perhaps a man who will be looked upon to. Well, let's go. Let's let's listen now. Curtis Colton, David Clark, Jerry Krause, Phil Jackson, Jerry Reinsdorf. I'm not sure who it is. Juanita and David Stern. Uh, Good morning. I know it was a late night for many of you. I'm sorry to get you here this early. I just have a few words to say and then we'll, we'll hear from Michael. This is a, a very bittersweet day. There's a certain sadness because the greatest athlete to ever play a team sport is leaving the game. But it's really, for me, a very, very happy day because somebody who I admire and respect is doing exactly what he wants to do. To do. Absolutely convinced that he's doing the right thing. About a year ago, when we were getting ready to begin training, training camp for the last season, Michael spoke to me about losing a little of the zest for the game and wondering about how long he would, he would play. Of course, we, he did play and we won another championship. Several weeks ago, at the Jordan Foundation dinner, Michael again brought the subject up and said that he was considering not playing. I asked him at the time not to make a hasty decision, to be sure that he thought everything through and that when he came to that decision, it would be one that he could live with and one he was absolutely certain of. We agreed at that time to get together in a couple of weeks we did uh, last Sunday, October the 3rd, Michael and Curtis and David Falk and I met in Washington at David's home. Michael reaffirmed his decision. I made absolutely no attempt to talk him out of it because I was convinced it was the right thing for him to do. I only asked him to do one thing and that was not to make the decision final until he spoke to Phil Jackson and to Jerry Krause, uh, which he did uh, uh, I guess it was yesterday morning. And after meeting with Phil for an hour and with Jerry, Michael again was convinced he did the right thing. I think all of us who know Michael are convinced that he is doing the right thing. He's living the American dream. The American dream is to reach a point in your life where you don't have to do anything you want to do, you don't want to do, and everything that you do want to do. So we respect the decision. We're sorry to leave him, to, to see Michael leave. But it's really been an honor and a pleasure for me and for the people of Chicago to have had Michael here for nine years. I can only imagine what it was like seeing Babe Ruth because I think this man, I used to say, was the Babe Ruth of basketball. I've now come to believe that Babe Ruth was the Michael Jordan of baseball. Michael? Thanks, Jerry. I think uh, everyone knows exactly what the circumstances are right now in terms of uh, my decision not to play a game of basketball. Uh, in the NBA doesn't mean I'm not going to play basketball somewhere else but uh, I've talked to all my confidence uh, my, my family my friends as uh, Jerry has just uh, informed you uh, to the organization uh, I even talked to David uh, Stern as of yesterday and even today and uh, I'm very solid with my decision of not to uh, play the, the game of basketball uh, in the NBA Reasoning being, I've heard a lot of different speculations about my reasons for not playing, but I've always stressed to people that have known me and the media that has followed me that when I lose, uh, 
the sense of motivation and the sense of to prove something as a basketball player, uh, it's time for me to move away from the game of basketball. It's not because I don't love the game. I love the game of basketball. I always will. I just feel that at this particular time in my career, I've reached the pinnacle of my career. Uh, I've achieved a lot in that short amount of time, if, uh, if you want to call it short. Uh, but I just feel that I don't have anything else for myself to prove. And I met with my teammates, some of my teammates this morning, and uh, it was very, very uh, emotional uh, because they meant a lot to me, and we have shared a lot of time together uh, over the last nine years, uh, Paxson being the guy that I've been with for the last eight years and other guys I've spent a lot of time for the last five years and we've achieved a lot. We've gone through a lot of stages and uh, my success has been as much as their success. They have been a part of that. Uh, my family's been a part of that. My wife, my, my father, who as everyone knows has, uh, has left us and uh, I guess the biggest uh, gratification, I'm a very optimistic person. I guess the biggest positive thing that I can take out of uh, you know, my father not being here with me today is that he saw my last basketball game, and that means a lot. Uh, it was something that we, I have talked, and my family has talked for a long period of time. Um, he advised me quite to retire after my first championship, uh, but we had many discussions, and my discussions was that I still had a lot to prove as a player, and I, I wanted to win more. Uh, at the end of the year, uh, after we won our third championship, we talked once again, and uh, I was kind of leaning towards that direction. Uh, and he knew that, and uh, my family knew that, and uh, it was just a matter of uh, waiting until this time when basketball was near to see if my heart would change. And I went through the, all the different stages of going, of getting myself prepared for the next year. And uh, the desire, was not there. And it wasn't uh, like everyone had speculated about all the different media pressure and, and the different pressures that I was feeling. I deal with pressure all the time. And I would, I've always said that I would never let you guys run me out the game. So don't think uh, that you've done that. Uh, this is my choice. And I've always wanted to make it my choice. And uh, it's a choice that I chose to live with. And Certainly it goes without some reservations a little bit because I'm missing, I'm going to miss the game, I'm going to miss the opportunities of you know, uh, winning extra championships and spending more time with teammates for eight months and going on, on trips or whatever and some of the things that men do in basketball. Uh, I'm going to miss it. You know, the psychological warfare that Phil put us all through in eight months, I'm going to miss that. Uh, but at some point in time you have to look at the future I think one thing about my father's death is that it can be gone and be taken away from you at any time. And there's still a lot of things out there for, for me to achieve. Uh, there's a lot of family members and friends that I haven't seen because I've been very selfish in my career uh, to try to get to this point and make sure that I achieve all the dreams that I want to achieve. Now that I'm here, it's time to be a little bit unselfish in terms of spending more time with my family and you know, my wife, my kids. Uh, and just get back to a normal life, as close to it as I could. It's going to be tough, but uh, I'm very happy with my decision, and I'm very uh, glad that I'm in a position to make that choice. You know, a lot of times you guys do all the pushing, <laughs> and now I'm taking the lead, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing all the necessary steps to walk away from the game when I feel I need to. But I'm glad for the fans and for the organization, for the support that they have given me and my family, and for the league. I think the league has gone from uh, from a, uh, from somewhere that you know a lot of people had a little doubts about the personalities and probably the, the image to where you know it's probably the highest uh, rated and most watched professional sport that there is, and I think uh, you know that means a lot you know, to all the guys who played in that era, especially myself. So uh, thank you, and uh, you know, hopefully I don't see too many of you guys in the future. And uh, now you can go somewhere else and get your stories. And uh, this is uh, probably the first time I've met this many people without a scandal around. So uh, it's, it's really a great feeling to, uh, to hear all the thank yous and certainly the support of these people here for my, my corporations and you know, Nike, Gatorade, all the people that I deal with. They've been very supportive of my, uh, my decision. And 
And I think that means a lot as a person and as a as as an endorsee of that product. So uh, thanks, and I'm willing to answer some of the off the wall questions that you guys are going to give me. Certainly, I would have made it uh, even if he would have been here. You know, it was a decision that I was very, I was contemplating about when uh, when the season ended. So, uh, so naturally, when my father uh, died, I, it put a little bit different emphasis on life in general, but it didn't alter my decision uh, no differently than what I had already, you know, basically leaned toward. Yeah, I'm in the pickup games now. I, you know, I'm, I'm here. I'm going to play for my kids and my family and, you know, pick up games when I feel the desire. And uh, I'm still an avid basketball fan. I'm still an avid uh, Chicago Bulls fan. And I will come to some of the practices. I, they haven't banned me from the practices like they've banned you guys. And, uh, you know, I'm still looking forward to watching this team be successful. A lot of people doubt this team because of, uh, you know, my uh, retirement. I don't. I just think that you know, when a when a father sends his kids out to college, that kid has to stand up on his own two feet. And I'm not saying I was a father of this group, but I took a lot of the, the pressures and some of the uh, the heat. But I know this team is prepared to step up and, and take what they uh, what they want. And uh, I told Scotty, I told BJ, I told John, I told all the guys. You, you still have the faith, you have the ability to achieve what you want to achieve. You just got to believe in it. And you got to go through all the uh, determination processes that you go through every day to step on that basketball court and, and prove or feel you have something to prove. And that was one of the reasons that I stepped away from the game because when I stepped on the basketball court, it wasn't anything else for me to prove. That's one of the reasons you guys have gone into my private life because you can't blame my basketball. Will I ever unretire? I don't know. You know, I think the, 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 the word retire means uh, you can do anything you want from this day on. So if I desire to come back and play again, maybe that's what I want to do. Maybe that's the challenge that I may need someday down the road. I'm not going to close that door. It's, it's, I don't believe in never, and I won't ever believe in it to this point. Get on somebody besides Jim Griffin. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah, my home is here. My wife is from Chicago. I can't take her anywhere outside of Chicago. Her family's here, and my kids has only known has only known Chicago. And I built some great roots here, and I like to remain here. And you know, as long as you guys stay away from my house, I can have peace and quiet. <laughs> Do I say that again? I don't think I ever would have a normal life. But I think it could be reduced some because it's going to be other stars. It's going to be other focuses in the game of basketball and in the game of sports. I realize it. But uh, if it can lessen just a little bit, it's better than what it is now. So I'm, I'm, I think it will over a period of time. You know, I don't have any reservations about stepping away from the spotlight. The spotlight's been very, very good to me. It, hopefully I've been good to it. It's been very uh, uh, something that many people don't encounter. You know, and I've encountered it, and I'm, certainly I've enjoyed it. But at some point in time, you just got to change ships. And I was watching George Brett when he was uh, talking about his retirement, and he had one interesting uh, uh, scenario. And he said that if you ride a roller coaster for nine years, don't you want to ride something else? And that's where I feel right now. I've been on this roller coaster for nine years. It's just time for me to ride something else. Golf is my relaxation, you know, and I haven't looked at it as a professional uh, uh, interest right now. My family is the, is the professional interest that I look at right now, and golf is going to be very uh, competitive to me. I think that's going to sap up a lot of that competitive attitude that I had for the game of basketball. Excuse me? Toughest decision was uh, leaving the team. Looks like we've lost the audio portion of the signal that we've gotten from the. Uh... Nobody does. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure you guys can hear me. Uh, I don't think so. You know, I'm, I'm from Chicago, and I want Chicago White Sox to win. And I think, uh, I think they have a good chance of winning. You know, um, you guys can't hear me? Why don't we wait until they fix the power? Want yeah. me to wait? I've been waiting for a while. I don't mind. All right. I, I hear all your questions, but no one can hear my answers, so I'd rather wait if you don't mind. I will. I'm blindsided on my right side. What's that? Going to New York to play with Patrick? <laughs> Frank Thomas. Who was that guy? Huh? Who was that guy? Oh, that guy. It's a, it's a Frank Thomas contract, and his wife thinks they're going to lose. <laughs> Hope this works. What? Is this working? No. If you've just joined us, there are audio problems uh, at the site, which they're working to rectify. But Michael right. Jordan saying he'd always stress that when I lose the sense of motivation and the sense of... Well, just to explain what happened here just momentarily, uh, just moments ago, uh, the entire room there, the press conference, uh, lost the audio portion of uh, what Michael was what Michael was saying here. So it wasn't just us; it was everyone in the room. Let's see if we can get uh, get Michael to begin again. You are right, Hagen. They had a lot of feedback when they first started as well. Let's just chat while we listen in the background to see when he gets back. Uh, you know, interesting that Michael Jordan. As Michael Jordan said just a few moments ago, I don't believe in never. But he said that he would have made the same decision had his father been alive. And it was just yesterday that North Carolina prosecutors said they will seek the death penalty in the capital case against the two young men charged with murdering James Jordan in August. Again, they are still attempting uh, at a rather hastily assembled news conference uh, to rectify the public. A remarkable book. But uh, I think that quoted by everyone, as we said, it's 23 months. As, uh, yes, it's time out Chicago. 23 months less. We might see him on a golf course or yeah. two along the way, but as far as basketball is concerned, I don't know. I don't think so. What do you know about how this uh, the story actually unfolded? I understand that uh, there were some leaks last night about this. Uh, the yeah, he threw out the first pitch, all smiles at the White Sox Toronto playoff game at Comiskey Park there in Chicago, a, a reigning hero amongst baseball players. And uh, baseball, of course, was a, was a love of his as well. I think he probably could have chosen to play just about any sport he wanted, but he chose basketball to our good fortune. Um, and then uh, he retired to uh, some of the private booths at Comiskey Park, and the rumor began to spread that he was going to call this press conference for this morning to retire. And uh, they quickly hustled him under vast security out of Comiskey Park in a way and this is the first time we've seen him since. Well, we don't know how the, the rumor leaked. Let's okay. see if we can hear him again. Well, I think the, uh, the news, this is, uh, has been so shocking. Oh, there we go. Uh, it's, uh, the the fuse box has, has been shocked back into action. Well, here. I mean, everyone wants to be remembered for the good things, first of all. <laughs> um, I just want to be remembered as a guy who enjoyed the game, played it 110%, uh, always had something to prove and when when that challenge was in front of him he stepped forward and, and proved it um, loved the game totally enjoyed it would play the game even if he didn't paid it didn't get paid a dollar that's how much i love the game uh, but in these days of economical means it doesn't happen as often but uh, i just want to be remembered as a guy who enjoyed the game and certainly was, uh, played it at 110 percent every time he stepped on the court Toughest decision, as I was beginning, was was uh, my teammates. You know, I, I really loved them a lot. I told them uh, it was a lot of times where uh, you know different personalities had to clash off the court or even uh, in the locker room. But when we stepped on that basketball court, everybody loved everybody. Everybody had the same focus and the same goals in mind, uh, and that's something that's going to be missed a lot. Um, 
but you know I had to do it for my own sake but I knew that I had enough memories to remember that those times and those feelings and uh, that was very tough to talk to Phil and talk to the organization and tell them it was time for me to move on. I slept good. I had a great roommate. I felt real good. Um, it was tough, you know, because uh, this was a tough decision to make, and uh, it was a tough announcement for me. Um, but it's many nights I don't get much sleep, and I go out and play games, and I mean, when I'm nervous, I say what's on my mind, and uh, I guess this is a great time to do it. No, because, uh, Melissa, I've always told you, as well as everyone who's watched me, that um, I never wanted to leave the game when my, game, when my skills started to diminish. Because once that starts to happen, I feel the foot in my back. You know, people pushing me out of the game, saying that I don't have the skills that I used to have. I think uh, one thing that I like to remember about my game is that I tried to maintain high consistency levels every year. And I felt when the consistency started to diminish, the foot starts pushing. And I didn't want to get to that situation. I wanted to, when I get to a pinnacle and I'm, I feel that my skills are still good, I'm not starting on the downside of my career, I want to walk away from the game. And it's been very fortunate that I'm on top. And I'm coming off three championship seasons, I'm coming off a great situation with my team where the team believes in themselves and have, a lot of them have stepped up and gained their identities and their, and their own... Uh, expectations for themselves, this is the perfect time for me to walk away. Can I remember any of It will. Always will. Um, that's just the way uh, life is. You're always going to have a better man out there somewhere. It may be one, two, three, four, five, maybe ten, twenty years down the road. It's always a better man somewhere. And uh, that is not one of my fears because as long as I was playing the game, I believed in myself as a basketball player and certainly as a person. And hopefully when that person comes along and maybe have the impact as a Magic Johnson, Dr. J, myself, Mary, Larry Bird, Charles Barkley, you know, he feels the same way. But it will be another player in that, nat in, in that, that nature. I would never do you, you guys' job because you don't have sympathy for, for normal people sometimes. And I think I like to give myself a little bit more credit to have sympathy for other people. No, I think uh, a lot of people, a lot of times over the last few years have tried to make me the ambassador of the league. And I've never accepted that role. I think it's a lot of players who must carry that label of the NBA so that if something like this happens, when a player reaches a point in his career he wants to step away, there's enough entertainment, enough people who are in the spotlight to carry that label. And that's what I think, that's where I think NBA basketball is now. You got a lot of superstars in this league, and with myself stepping away, there's other players to carry that label. Dr. J did it for many years for himself. He carried that label for a long period of time. I don't think it's ever going to be a, a person who want to accept that responsibility for themselves, by themselves. I never wanted to do it. I don't think Larry, I don't think Magic, any one of them wanted to do it. And I don't think they did. So I think basketball is here to stay. And I think you got other rising stars uh, who can carry that label. And I think uh, it will be successful continuously. Oh, hey. <laughs> He got even with you. <laughs> I guess he's even now. <laughs> yeah, I heard you last night. You took it the wrong way. I don't appreciate what you said. Uh, my whole initiative was to do it today. And it leaked out yesterday. And the reason that I did it here today is training camp starts Thursday. I wanted to get it over and done with before training camp starts because I feel the team has to start on their own two feet and they should start 
on the first day of training camp. That was my initiative for doing it today. It wasn't to overshadow the White Sox. If it was, I wouldn't have went to the game. You know, I went to the game to support, and I'm, I'm here to support the White Sox. I'm not here to overshadow anyone. I'm here to say goodbye to the game at this particular time so the lives of my teammates and of the franchise and of the Chicago Bulls move forward starting Thursday when training camp opens. That was my initiative. I can't hear all you guys. I should have expected that question from you. I expected it because I am in touch with my feelings about the game, about my skills to the game. Uh, I've always been in tune to what's right for me as a player and as a person in, in these circumstances. And that's what I went with. I went with my feel, not with, uh, with the circumstances surrounding that. Uh, if I didn't have the desire to step on the basketball court and have something to prove, then I must admit that. I can't step out there and know that I'm, I'm out there for no reason. It's not worth it for me. And I don't think it's worth it for my teammate. When I step on the basketball court, I'm out there for a reason to prove something and to help my teammates achieve. If I step out there for any other reason, you know, it's not me. And I didn't want to go through that scenario. Will you join some games this year? It looks like a I will attend some games. I won't tell you which ones because uh, I like to surprise the team and certainly eliminate you guys bringing more pressure to, the, to that particular game. But I am a fan, and I still want to go to some of the games. Uh, I will talk to some of the players. I won't give any coaching. That's Phil's job. But uh, if I can be a friendship to any of the players and help them through some trying times with the media, <laughs> I'm willing to pass my advice to them. And that's not to talk to you. <laughs> Excuse me? No, I've always respected the media. I will continue to respect some of you. Um, you guys have a job just like I have a job, and I've always respected that. And uh, sometimes you've gotten on my nerves, and sometimes I've uh, omitted it, and sometimes I have admitted it. So uh, um, I've always tried to keep a, a good, clean relationship with you guys, and I don't think uh, I have any bitterness towards you guys as I walk away from the game. I'm not a hatred type of person. I don't carry no grudges or, uh, uh, you know, when I'm walking away, I'm walking away with a clean slate. And uh, I wish you guys well in your, your careers as reporters as well as, you know, my teammates and their success. My contract situation, you know, uh, a lot of people had a speculation that I'm leaving because I'm not getting paid these astronomical dollars that some of the other players are getting paid. You know, I signed my contract when I signed it. You guys have known that for years that, you know, when I put my name on that dotted line, I'm not going to go back and cry about what I'm getting paid. I've always put it in a situation, as you guys probably deal with in your own profession, if you did deserve a raise, you would get a raise. I will not ask for any compensation because I'm walking away from the game. I didn't walk away from the game because uh, Larry Johnson got $84 million for 12 years. That's great for Larry Johnson. He had the leverage, he should do so. If anybody else come in the league and they got the leverage, they should utilize it because your, your length of prospering in, in your abilities in playing in the game is very limited. So you should take advantage of it. I'm very happy with my financial situation, and I will not sit here and twist Mr. Reinsdorf's arm or whatever and ask him for a compensation as I walk away from the game. Uh, he's been very straightforward with me as much as I've been straightforward with him. My contracts uh, have been extended to 10 years, uh, playing basketball and not playing basketball, and that's something that's... Uh, the re that's part of the relationship that we have had with my endorsees. So I, I expect that to continue. And with the people, with my endorsees being here, I think that shows the support that they have, uh, they have had for my decision. And uh, I don't think it's going to tarnish my relationship at all with them. The first title is probably the biggest thrill that I've had because coming into the city of Chicago uh, it wasn't a bright situation and we were not on top we were not even in the middle but I've seen every stage uh, to get to the top and the city's probably been uh, waiting for a long period of time because all they had to say was wait until next year and it gives me great gratification that during the time that I played a game of basketball here in the city of Chicago 
they don't have to say that anymore. You know, they got bragging rights all over the country. Uh, for many years, it's been known as a gangster town. Now it can be known as a championship town. And hopefully the White Sox can carry that on as well as other sports. But that's the fondest memories that I can have about the city of Chicago and its sports programs. I, I would say it's a pretty good bet that nobody will wear number 23 on the Chicago Bulls again. That wasn't a bet. He doesn't bet. <laughs> I support Michael's decision. Mike, do you consider the No. Um... Uh, Magic's got a whole different agenda than I do. Um, he still loves, he still wants to play competitively. I don't. Uh, I want to play leisurely. And I want to do it with smaller companies and smaller people than, you know, than he's doing right now. And I don't non-support Magic Johnson. I support him. I just, I'm not saying that's what I want to do. I want to do other things than to play basketball as an exhibition situation. I don't want to do that. Did I? No. No way. Uh, my heart has been here. I can't even think about playing uh, for another team. Um, that's not even a, a train of thought. No. My Olympic days are over and done with. Uh, it was great. I think uh, every athlete who never really had that opportunity to represent their countries should do that, you know, uh, either NBA or college, doesn't make a difference. It's the greatest feeling that you can ever go through. Anybody try to talk me out of it? A lot of people have. Uh, and, I, and I needed that, you know, that side of, uh, of, the, of the coin to make a, a good picture of what my decision was going to be. Uh, but once I made the decision, everyone supported it because they understood from my point of view. Out of 100%, I would say 95% uh, supported me. Another 5% you know, wanted to see me play. And it wasn't of selfishness. They just felt uh, I had a gift that would be kind of missed. And that's the highest compliment that I can take in that circumstance. But uh, I had to make a decision for myself in that circumstance and for, for what I want to achieve and what I had already achieved. No, Charles is, changes his number every week. <laughs> and uh, I did see him last night on television and um, we've always talked about retiring at the same time. But I think it's a little different scenario uh, between Charles and myself, uh, being that I've achieved a lot and a lot of my goals, and I think he still has things that he wants to achieve. Uh, sadly, that uh, I couldn't hang around till he uh, do those things because I was standing in his way. <laughs> uh, now that I'm out the game, I hope he does as well as Patrick because he's a good friend and uh, and other players. But uh, I wish that we could have left the game at the same time, but it just wasn't the same focus and the same uh, goals left for both of us. I'm going for the Bulls all the way. You know, I mean, Charles, I love him as a friend, but I love the Chicago Bulls as a family because that's where I was bred and, and, and that's where we achieved a lot and I live in Chicago. So uh, I, wanted, I want the Chicago Bulls to, to continue on. Excuse me? Well, I was pretty much decided at that particular time, but uh, I think what he made me realize was how short life is. Uh, and that was a, a, an era that I had to look at, you know, how quickly something could end so, so, uh, so quickly and so innocently. Um, 
Naturally, I was saddened by it, and, and, and it took me a while to deal with it. But I'm an optimistic person. I took something positively from it. And, yeah, he had some uh, decision in making me realize how, va how valuable life is, and then that, in turn, made me make my decision even simpler. But uh, I was leaning and very much in that direction way before he passed. Excuse me? No. If so, I'd still be playing. Uh, I looked at basketball, I even talked to Phil, and I asked Phil, quite frankly, is it anything for me to prove as a basketball player? And he thought for a second, and that's all I needed. Because if it was, he would have told me real quickly. And uh, that's the way I left it, you know, basically. It wasn't anything for me to prove as a player. We're still planning to open the season on November 5th. <laughs> and, uh, and we're sure it's going to be a great season. We're going to take about five more minutes of questions from Michael. The other participants on the dais will be available, so if you want to get uh, five more with Michael. When did Michael your impressions of leading the game of the team? Not many professional athletes have ever done. That's how I wanted to be uh, remembered is that, you know, I conquered a lot. What's, what was very, very uh, intriguing and very... Uh, important was that when I got to the pinnacle of my career, I achieved practically everything I could from an individual standpoint and from a team standpoint. And it really made it, made it easy to walk away while you was on top. And yeah, very few people do that. I was just happy that I was in a predicament to do that. Well, you know, I mean, you're talking to a guy who was maybe six or five years old when Jim Brown decided that. I, I've heard Jim Brown was one of those uh, athletes who did that, but um, that didn't have anything to do with my decision. Uh, and that's not a knock on Jim Brown. Uh, that's, you know, I had to deal with what I'm faced with and, and deal with it what's in a way that I feel best suits me. Michael, do you envision you might uh, wind up missing the cheers, the accolades? Uh, I mean, a lot of athletes sometimes, when they, and you've had so many of them over the years, but that, do you envision you might miss that? No. I think... Um, it's been real good, and I've always been uh, very fond of the respect that I've received from the home fans as well as some of the away fans. But I'd say when I walk away from the game, I won't miss the cheers because it was there. It was there. I can remember those things, but I don't need it to live. I don't need it to survive. Um, and that was, that's, that's very important for me. Will I ever buy ownership interest? No. I don't think so. I think. Uh, don't say never. I won't say never. It's, that's not in my plans as of right now. I don't know if I got the, uh, the desire to do that. I see Jerry, he's living a hard life. I don't know if I can go through that. He's got to make some tough decisions, and that's, that's tough. Well, I knew that would happen someday. It doesn't matter when, but I knew it was going to happen. When I walk away from the game, a lot of people, especially the kids, would be disappointed. But if parents are watching this and certainly could touch their kids, as you probably can touch your, your neighbors or your kids, is to let them know that basketball is great to play it. It's an enjoyment, it's a fun, it's a hobby. But it's a lot to life other than sports and to, and to you know, football or basketball or whatever. And yet, my life goes on, I'm still in love with the game, but at some point in time, everyone has to make a decision to move forward away from games. Uh, either be it your choice or someone else's choice. And I've just been fortunate that I can make that choice now, instead of one of you guys pushing me out and saying I'm old and you know it's time for me to move on. So I, I know that kids are gonna be disappointed, but hopefully they learn that Michael Jordan was once a basketball player, but now he's a human being, he's a man, he must continue on, he has a family, he got other things he must achieve. Michael, besides golf and your family, what can you do? In retirement, you do whatever comes to your first thought. You know, uh, you know it's relax. Enjoy uh, the time that you've been deprived of for many years. 
Uh, I still have uh, opportunities to get with my companies and do some certain endorsements and certain business opportunities within them. And uh, that's what I would do whenever I feel that time hits me. But up until that point, I'm going to watch the grass grow, and i got to go cut it. Yeah, I'm capable of relaxing. I've been relaxing for the last couple of months. Uh, so I am capable of just hiding from you guys and doing what I want. I hope to. If I get a pop belly, then I start exercising. No. It's, uh, it's good for everybody to go through training camp, and it was fun going through Phil's. And, uh, yeah, I will miss it a little bit, but I won't miss it. The league is strong. I think David Stern has done a good job in making it strong enough that if this day came and everyone knew it was going to come, that it was strong enough to survive. This league will survive. It's got enough stars to take the places of the stars who just left the game. It's in different forms and different fashions, but it's there. And the game is still as entertaining as it was. It may be in different fashion and maybe not with the familiar faces, but the game goes on. It always will and it always uh, will be just as exciting, I think. And uh, you know, we, I think it's been preparing for this moment. And uh, it's just going to move forward. Excuse me? Would I miss the sport? I'm pretty sure I missed the sport. To come back, that's a different different thought. I can't answer that. Uh, I'm not making this uh, a never issue. I'm saying right now I don't have the mental uh, drive to come out and, and push myself to play for a certain focus. Uh, five years down the line, if that urge comes back, if the Bulls have me, if, if David Stern lets me back in the league, I may come back. But uh, you know, that's an option that I would never close on. You know, I like to have that option, and uh, you know that's something that that I'm, I'm willing to deal with and take the t take the chances with. Walking away from you guys in a few minutes, that would be a good step. Time for two more questions. Well, I mean, as I got later in my years, and. Uh, as I got more successful with the team and, uh, and I achieved so much as an individual, I had lesser to prove. I started gearing towards that, that decision of when would be the correct time to walk away. And now is the correct time. I really feel that. I felt it in college after three years, and I feel it now after nine years. Uh, I won't have any regrets. I won't, I won't look back. I will move forward, and, and certainly I, I think I will succeed wherever I move. Michael, has this been an emotional time for you as you consider this decision? Yeah and no. Uh, my mind's been made up. The emotional thing has been listen to guys who try to give me an op opposite side of the coin because they showed emotion, and that in turn made me feel really good and made me show emotions. And, uh, but when I thought about it deep down, as I've thought about it for a long period of time, I was doing what was right. And that's all they ever wanted was what was right for me. Do I need a job? No. I never had a job. I don't want one now. Well, I mean, not just to a superstar, but to any players. As, as I talked to my teammates, and I told them, uh, this day is going to come for, very, for everybody. Enjoy it while you have it, because it's very limited, and it is a treasure. And even with Shaquille and these other stars coming into the league, you'll be a star for a while. You may get tired of it. You may want to step back. It's always your choice. When you do it, don't have reservations. Be happy with your decision. Like I'm happy with my decision. And I don't have any reservations about it. Thanks, Michael. And while it may not be original, it is true. We have just seen the end of an era. Michael Jordan announcing his retirement from the professional basketball game. They are in Chicago, or outside Chicago, in Deerfield, Illinois. 
CNN was giving you live coverage of his press conference there. And then he is, Jordan is now leaving. We uh, assume that uh, others will be speaking in the just a few minutes with the discussion about this all this whole thing with Jim Huber, so stay with us. Senator Michael Jordan saying in his own words that it's time to move forward away from games. I won't miss the cheers. I don't need it to live. I don't need it to survive. And uh, at this point, every member of the media and our own Andrea Kramer among them hoping to uh, perhaps get another word with Michael Jordan, who has just announced his retirement. He talked about the passing of his father, how quickly and innocently things can end. But he's in for America West. There's one season. Jordan led the Bulls in scoring in all 22 playoff games, averaging 36 points in the finals against Portland. And the Bulls were back to back. And then a three-peat. Jordan denied his friend Charles Barkley a title. Michael and the Bulls taking their place in NBA history. Yet Jordan's off-the-court exploits at times threatened to tarnish his on-court glory. Losing large amounts of money on the golf course to a convicted North Carolina drug trafficker two years ago. Last spring, the subject of a book which alleged Jordan had lost more than a million dollars on golf bets. And that Jordan had a gambling problem. And then last summer, the murder of James Jordan, Michael's father and perhaps his closest friend. James Jordan was with Michael immediately following that first NBA title. Some say his death robbed Jordan of his desire for the game. And so at age 30, after nine glorious seasons, Michael Jordan, arguably the greatest player ever to step on a basketball floor, retires. And for all Michael Jordan has given us, we continue to ask for more. It's only natural to see a thing of beauty and want it to last forever. His legacy, of course, are numbers. The number three, which are the number of championships that he led the Chicago Bulls to in a row. But his legacy is also great memories, and we will carry those for the rest of our lives, be he on a court or not. Leon? All right. Thanks, Jim. Well, for those of you who are just tuning in, or if you missed part of the news conference, or if you just are so stunned you can't believe it and you want to see it again, well, you can set your VCRs because CNN will have a, not exactly instant replay, we'll replay the uh, news conference for you coming at 4.30 a.m. Eastern. So set those VCRs. Doing this. Why not? Because I admire and respect and love him too much, and clearly this was the right thing for him to do. And it would not have been honest for me to tell Michael that I thought he should continue playing because I don't believe he should continue playing. He's come to a point in his life where he needs to go and do something else. There's been some time, particularly with the gambling allegations that arose during the playoffs, that Michael was very bitter toward the media. How do you think, what sort of an effect do you think that ultimately had in his decision? I don't think it was a major thing, but you know, all big decisions are based on a lot of little factors. And Michael was put under an awful lot of pressure the last several years. He was expected to live to a standard that uh, nobody can live up to. Uh, he was criticized for things that he shouldn't have been criticized for. That, that, that probably had you know, some bearing on it. It took some of the fun away. What he said was, he, would, he always said he would stop playing when it wasn't fun. Being hounded is not fun. That may have had a, you know, some bearing on it, but, but on balance, I think he just decided that there was nothing else that he needed to accomplish. Uh, he used the expression extra championships. He needed to win three to show that he could do more than Larry and Michael could do. But anything after this is extra. Uh, when Magic Johnson retired and he kept coming back, it was a very almost ambivalent situation for the Lakers organization. Now Michael's retired today, but he has left the door open to come back. What is the reaction to the organization on that? Well, we'll deal with that when the time comes. But, but knowing Michael, if he ever decides to come back, that will be a correct decision and we'll support that. Will that happen, do you think? I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, the only thing I'm concerned about is I want Michael to be very, very happy, and I want the White Sox to win tonight. Thank you very much, Jerry. We appreciate it. Hope they do win for you finally. Well, Bob, I mean, that, that's a whole other point, which we haven't even addressed, which is, oh, by the way, there is a championship series going on here, but as happened last night and is certainly the case, uh, quite overshadowed by these, uh, by these events. 
Two things, Andrea, that really stick out in my mind. You touched upon some of it with uh, Jerry Reinsdorf, and that is the, the question of the media. In fact, uh, he had said, Michael, that the media doesn't have sympathy for ordinary people. Also, the question of privacy. You live in Chicago. You know what it's like to be around Michael Jordan. He lives in a glass bubble unlike any other in the world. No question. And we have, over the years, we have sat down on several occasions, and he has made this point over and over again that it's difficult for him to live like this. The, the scrutiny that he's under, it really came to a head, as I mentioned with Jerry Reinsdorf, during these past playoffs when the gambling allegations forced a media onslaught, not anything like what we saw here today, but certainly forced him into uh, not speaking to the media. And, and the irony, of course, as we remember, is that his father was speaking for him at that time. His father's not there now. The irony that I thought also, Bob, is that it's, he said that he would have made the same decision even if his father was alive today. All right, Andrea, thanks. We'll see you on the Expanded Sports Center at 7 o'clock Eastern time tonight as we continue to look at the impact of the story of Michael Jordan's retirement, saying, I won't miss the cheers. I don't need it to live. I don't need it to survive. Leaving on top, the world's transcendent athlete, age 30, leaving on top like Jim Brown, like Sandy Koufax, like Rocky Marciano, Michael Jordan announcing his retirement, three times the world champion. After this word, back to your regularly scheduled programming.